First at six, the savage beating of a black man at the hands of Memphis police is raising questions about police protocol and prompting calls for change nationwide. Good evening, I'm Brian Blakely. Friday, Memphis police released one hour of video footage showing the violent beating that led to 29-year-old Tyree Nichols' death. That video consisted of four parts, including footage from an officer's body camera and a neighborhood security camera. It shows an officer responding to a traffic stop where Nichols was pulled over under suspicion of reckless driving. Another angle of the video shows the officers punching, kicking, and beating Nichols with a baton. He was also tased and pepper sprayed, Five of those officers are now charged with Nichols' murder, and another has since been relieved of duty. Memphis police released the highly anticipated footage nearly three weeks after the incident. Tennessee law is allowed for the video's release, but rules are different here in the Carolinas. Queen City News anchor Derek Dellinger has been looking into the idea of whether those rules could change. And Derek, this has been a big issue in the Tar Heel State over the last few years because it takes a judge's order to release the body cam footage. Uh, yes, a court order and usually a long process in North Carolina and in South Carolina. It's largely left to the discretion of the law enforcement agency. But the video of Tyree Nichols beating has so many people asking now, should there be easier access, especially because of what happened in Memphis? It may have been a tough watch, but very few could argue that the release of the video of Tyree Nichols beating earlier this month was not in the public interest. Friends, family, and the public wanted to know what happened, and after officers were charged, police said there was a right to know, and public records laws allow for it in Tennessee. In North and South Carolina, though, it's different, and in some cases, a lot different. For North Carolina Attorney General Josh Stein, who also recently announced a run for governor, he saw the value in the footage released from Memphis. Anguish. Yep. Uh, heartbreaking, uh, absolutely infuriating. Mm -hmm. The people who we empower, we give them a badge, we give them a gun to abuse that power and kill a man, th mm -hmm. there's absolutely no excuse for it. Releasing body cam footage may sound like an issue just for news organizations. So while yes, it is, it's important for context to more accurately telling the story, there are other reasons, questionable interactions with law enforcement. And if you yourself have questions about a case or even for insurance purposes, in North Carolina, that footage for years now has required a judge's order to release. In South Carolina, body cams are not subject to freedom of information laws, which can sometimes create its own problems. I think we've got to do things, you know, openly and transparently, um, but you also have to keep it close enough to the vest to fully investigate. State Representative Tommy Pope from York County is also a lawyer and former prosecutor. South Carolina's body cam laws allow law enforcement agencies to exercise discretion with exceptions. If I was the victim, you know, and police had video of it. That's one of the, the exceptions under our law that have to be turned over. You know, obviously, in other words, if you're a subject in it, if I was a defendant in it. The body cam footage of Tyree Nichols is likely to have some lawmakers across the country revisiting the issue of body worn camera footage and public access, something Pope says he would welcome in South Carolina. In Tennessee, um, you know, it is part of their um, public information, where in South Carolina it is, is exempt from our FOIA or Freedom of Information Act statute. And Stein says North Carolina needs more of. I think we need to have more body cams, more dash cams, and they should be more accessible to the public. And even though body worn cameras are largely the norm in a lot of places, it's important to know that they are not entirely universal. It really comes down to cost for a small police department. It may not be worth it. In fact, those small police departments usually have to get grants. However, those we spoke with say this is becoming more and more of a necessary business expense. Brian. All right, Derek Dellinger live in the studio for us tonight. Protesting